Are you ready for an amazing summer with your kids, but are you feeling anything like me where you're afraid of the fighting, where you are afraid of entertaining? How are you going to entertain them? Or are you worried about how you're going to get your own stuff done without your kids spending all day long on electronics? If there, if these are some of the thoughts that you are thinking right now as we approach the summer, that is what we are going to be tackling today on the Possibility Mom Live. It is so good to spend some time with you today, especially after the last couple of weeks where I have been fighting a little bit of a cold. This has been one interesting virus that just has not wanted to leave me. So I've still got a little bit of residual, whatever you want to call it, raspiness to my voice. But I am so excited to be talking about the summer. We have just launched into summer here in the Canning House in Florida. Summer comes a little bit earlier and we start school a little bit earlier than my friends in the North, like what I was used to growing up in Toronto. And so we are in full on summer mode. And yesterday I was on a date with my husband and I was like, oh my gosh, how is it that I feel unprepared yet again? (laughs) Where... <clears throat> I feel like I have not done anything to sort of like prepare for summer. I have not created any kind of schedule or any kind of accountability for my kids. And so I thought that this would be the perfect, perfect topic to launch into today. How to have an amazing summer with all your kids at home without feeling drained every single day. Day. And I want to encourage you to stay tuned to the end of this episode because I'm going to share a very fun live resource that I think is going to be very, very helpful for parents who struggle with meltdowns, tantrums, power struggle, particularly in your small kids, but also with your large ones. Like, I don't know about you guys, but my my older kids, I mean, heck, me, I can throw down a pretty epic tantrum if I am not managing my mind. So I want you to uh, stay tuned to the end of this episode to hear about an amazing live resource that I'm going to be offering. But here's the thing with summer. I think summer is an amazing opportunity for relaxation. I think summer is a great opportunity for everyone to rest. And summer is also an amazing opportunity to create family memories. But we also don't want to lose ourselves in the process. So many moms here are also moms who are building businesses. And so, of course, you're going to want to be able to tap into the things that you enjoy, tap into the things that you um, would like to move forward, some of your goals. And so I want to offer some very practical, implementable tips on how to have an amazing summer, but also not lose yourself in the process. And I want to frame them in a way that my spiritual director today sort of introduced to me as a bit of a framework. And this is a letter that St. Um, uh, Pope John Paul II wrote to pastors. And it's called in Latin, Pastore, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? Pastore Deva Novis, in English, Pastors After My Own Heart. And it was his writings on how he wants or how he was he felt that would be beneficial for priests to be developed in the seminary. And I think while this was focused on priestly formation, I think this has so much application for the entire Christian world and very much so for us Catholic moms. And that's focus on the following four areas, academic, spiritual, pastoral, and human. So in this podcast, I'm going to break down things that we can do in each of these areas so that we can have an amazing summer with all the kids at home and not feel completely drained every single day. Okay, so area number one is academic. 
And of course, when John Paul was talking about this for priests, this would be the study of theology. This would be um, the study of uh, the Catholic faith from an academic point of view. For us moms, what I would love to encourage us to do is to simply pick one skill that you would like to develop this summer. So for those of you who run businesses, this could be something in your business that you've always wanted to learn, that you've always wanted to try. Perhaps it is something that is a little bit more of a hobby. Maybe you're going to jump on the pandemic, uh, post-pandemic or during the pandemic trend of making bread. I would love to encourage you to just pick one skill that you would like to develop from an academic point of view, meaning you would like to learn more about. So for example, um, I am currently reading this book that is so interesting and so fulfilling, and it is how to take a business from six to seven figures. So a really simple way to implement an academic goal. So this is more like the study of something. So maybe bread making wasn't a perfect example because can you really academically study bread? I guess you could if you really like wanted to read about the history um, and really get into that process. Yeah, I guess, you know what? No, no, I take it back because you could really learn. The whole point of the academic thing is that you are learning something. You are learning. You are increasing your mental vocabulary, you are increasing um, your awareness and thoughts around a particular skill, right? Gardening could be a great example for summer. Perhaps it is something that you want to study. The point is, is that it's something you want to study. And so a simple way that you can implement an academic goal this summer is pick one book in your chosen niche, whatever it is. So gardening, perhaps you're going to read an amazing book on how to garden or invest in some kind of a video series or training on how to garden. Or maybe it is truly an academic, uh, more traditional academic pursuit for you. Like maybe you want to learn about the history of World War II, for example. And like my example stated, I want to learn how to take my business from six to seven figures. So I've got a couple books in the queue to read this summer. What's great about a book is that you can pick it up and put it down. And so if your children ask you for something, if you get interrupted, a book is a really easy way to have a bit of an academic goal. Your goal is to read the book. That's it. I'm not even talking about applying it. Of course, we, you know, you can't apply it. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But just one, you don't even have to do anything with it is what I'm trying to say. I just think the pursuit of learning can be very, very healthy for us. We should always be good stewards of the brain the Lord has given us, in my humble opinion. And so to enrich ourselves academically is always going to be a great thing. So that is goal number one is an academic goal. And it can be as simple as reading a book, or perhaps you can listen to a book on audio, but we are doing something to better our brain, increase our knowledge, increase our sphere or scope of the world a little bit by learning something. The second area, a spiritual goal. And I think this one for a mom in the summer is just pick one spiritual practice to master. And honestly, I could have put master in quotations. All I mean here is let's just get into the habit of one spiritual practice that we are going to hold on to this summer. You could almost think the same way that many people will use Lent or use Advent as they are penitential times. So we often will have these practices that we do, we, we, um, uh, do more regularly or do with more fervor during these times. What if the summer there was one spiritual practice that you will just like without fail ensure you do? And to me, a really simple one, although it might sound like a lot, but I think especially in times when all the kids are at home, when there's a little bit more noise, when there's a little bit more activity, there might be more friends coming in and out. One great spiritual practice that we can all um, benefit from as Catholic mamas is waking up before our kids to pray. Now, I can hear the people in the back feeling like there's no way I can do that. Oh my gosh, the nights are longer uh, with summer. Bedtimes might not be as strict and what have you. But I just like, it, it really like what I have learned 
with nine kids, with running a business, a morning time to yourself can pay dividends so much into the future, which is your day. I believe that when you can get a little bit of quiet, when you can get in that prayer that is going to sustain you, oh my word, like it just can be, like your day can look so different when you have been able to have even just a few minutes of recollection and fuel as opposed to being thrusted into chaos from the moment your eyes open. Does this require a teeny tiny little bit of of work? Sure. Meaning, do we have to like go to bed at a certain time? Um, Maybe set an alarm? Absolutely. But I honestly argue even just 15 minutes to just enjoy 15 minutes. um, One goal might be that you wake up before your kids. And what do you do during that prayer time? This is something that I remember asking my spiritual director for like basically like instructions. I was like, tell me what to do during my prayer time. So if you're anything like me and you prefer maybe a little bit of structure or some guidance, I love the Magnificat. The Magnificat is a very simple book that essentially has the mass readings. It has got um, some reflections. It has some beautiful um, stories of the saints in it. And again, it's the kind of thing that you can pick up, but if you get interrupted, you can always go back to and finish. And so a simple spiritual goal for a mom might be simply every day, wake up before the kids and do your Magnificat. If you don't get up before the kids, no big deal. You can still do your Magnificat. Do your Magnificat while your kids are having breakfast. Do your Magnificat. Do your prayer time. Prayer time can happen anytime, even if it gets interrupted, in my humble opinion. Um, And that is what my prayer time typically looks like. If the baby has not allowed me to um, have some quiet time or if my morning time gets interrupted, my morning time will often be interrupted by little children getting up with me. I'm kind of just like, okay, whatever. Uh, I, I just read the Magnificat whenever I can throughout the day. All right. So that is a spiritual goal that we can set for ourselves. Pastoral goal. I think this is a really interesting one. And I had to ask my spiritual director to like def- like define for me like pastoral. How is pastoral different than human? How is pastoral different um, from other things? And essentially pastoral is like the application. So you are um, learning something or you're, 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 you know, you have like something happens during your prayer time, like you get some kind of like a message, a word, whatever. And then pastoral is how you apply it. Pastoral is also how you teach your children how to grow closer to Jesus, how to make virtuous choices, all the things. And so one thing I think in a summer could be a really interesting thing to explore as a a pastoral goal is one-on-one time with your kids. And I think it can be very, like I've got nine kids. So for me, that can look like some really strategic planning But I want to encourage you, whether you've got one or you've got many like I do, even just using bedtime as a way of fitting in the one-on-one. And so like just bedside chats, like where you are just simply asking them, you know, what was your favorite part of the day? You know, what was so fun? You know, what did you, um, what did you learn about yourself today? Whatever. But just where there is some one-on-one time, I think the summer can allow sometimes for more of that because we are tending to be a little bit more leisurely. We're not running to school. Um, and I just, one-on-one time I have, it's really been impressed on me lately, especially as my kids are getting older and I now have a teenager, everyone. Oh my word. I have a 13 year old. Just how important it is for kids to feel seen and heard. I can't remember who said this, but it was really, um, it, 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 it was impressed on my heart quite a bit that you need to talk to kids about not important things. So like you need to ask them their favorite Marvel movie. You need to talk about why they prefer ketchup on their hot dog. You need to, um, you know, learn about uh, why, uh, you know, the Hunger Games trilogy is like superior to, you know, whatever, something else. Like, because when they feel listened to in the everyday things, when you need to talk about very important things, 
they will listen. There is trust built. There is open communication. And so I just think one-on-one time helps facilitate a lot of things for our benefit as moms, more buy-in from our kids. And it can be as simple as bedside chats. Okay. The fourth area, and this is the one where I have many opinions, (laughs) and that is the human, your human formation our human goal. And that is simply one habit you'd like to improve. And if you want to like just put all these together in one bow, all four of these, your academic, your um uh your academic, your spiritual, your pastoral and human goal, you can make your one thing for the summer is I'm every day going to wake up early and do these all. Like that could be a really, really simple way to tie these all in together, but just pick one habit you would like to improve and a really, really like simple, um, uh, thing that you could implement this summer that falls under human formation, of course, is just some simple time blocking. This is the response to how do I keep my kids entertained all day? This is the response to I'm afraid that they're all going to be like on the internet um, or sorry, excuse me, on electronics all day long because I've got my own stuff to do. How do I navigate that? If you've been following me for a while, you know I have a course called Conquer Your Calendar. You know how much I care about time management and a really simple thing that you can do this summer so that you have an amazing summer, your kids have an amazing summer, you're not feeling drained all the time, is just very simple time blocks. And in a day, I think it could be strategic for a mom, especially a mom who's running a business, to have one time block for business or other projects, if you're not running a business, your own stuff, one time block for the house, and one time block for play with kids where you are intentionally, maybe exclusively like putting your phone down and doing something with them. You might be like, but Lisa, it's the summer. Like, I don't want to have like a schedule of any kind. If that works for you, amazing. For most moms that I coach, especially those that are in business, where a lot of tension lies is where they're just sort of like responding in a knee jerk way, you know, where there's something that ha- like a fire to be put out at all times. And yes, I think that <clears throat> if you would like to take a more relaxed approach this summer, of course you can, you can move around these time blocks, however you want. You could not schedule the time blocks if you really want to, to be very spontaneous, But just having that knowledge that there are some things that I would like to be able to get done daily for my business could be very simple things like posting to social media, obviously fulfilling client things, um, uh, you know, working on uh, new projects, new courses, new things you want to develop, making offers. Obviously, there's I teach these all in my business buffet that I just released uh, or just uh, presented live last week, six essential components of a business. There will very likely be things you want to get done, and I want to encourage you to not feel guilty about wanting to do those, but simply just have it in the calendar in your day somewhere and communicate this is what is happening. When you also have somewhere in the calendar where it's like play, you know, you've heard me say this many times before after this podcast, I know that this afternoon there's going to be a bunch of aimless time with my children. And so therefore there's a little, there's, I know that there's going to be time for that. And then of course, when all of our kids are home, there might be a little bit more traffic. There might be more meals. There might be more dishes to obviously be like, okay, have I, has, has any laundry happened today? Has any, um, you know, the cleaning up of key areas, my pantry, um, my, my laundry room, uh, like, have we, have we gone through toys lately? Just like a one small contribution to the overall home maintenance and cleanliness can make you feel like, oh, okay. Everything is not getting piled up one, there's been incremental progress in my home. That can be so helpful for a mom to feel like, wow, like my summer, my home did not absolutely fall apart. 
Now, all of these things are so, so interesting because they are all, um, they might require a little bit of stretching. They also require buy-in. This is something that a beautiful woman that I work with named Kelly Shoup, she's a pediatric parenting coach and occupational therapist. This is something that she has really helped me to see very differently. Getting buy-in from family. So if you would like to explore these four areas, an academic goal, a spiritual goal, a pastoral goal, um, and a human goal, human formation goal, these are all going to require a little bit of communication and a little bit of buy-in. And so I want to share with you that Kelly and I have teamed up to create a free training. If you're watching this live, it's next Wednesday, July 8th at 12 p.m. East. And I've put the link in the description for this podcast for where you can register completely for free. If you're listening to this after the fact, I want you to, I want to encourage you to go check out what Kelly is doing. She has a monthly membership for Catholic parents who want to end the power struggle. I think this is where the summer can be really interesting because power struggle can show up in a very unique way when you've got kids home all day, especially if they are young and they have been used to a structure and a routine and knowing what is coming next in a day, all day at school. Now we're thrown into a different rhythm, a different routine. It might be welcome at first, but it's completely natural that there will be pushback, there will be some behavior, there will be some perhaps undesirable behavior uh, from your children. And this is where we need to up-level our skills as parents. And where it is completely possible, where you have so much potential, and where Honestly, with just a few tips and a few strategies, your summer can go from feeling like you are drained every single day and frustrated and exerting a lot of um, energy in discipline to one that feels truly fun, fulfilling, full of family memories, which I know if you are listening to this podcast, I know you care about your children and you care about your relationship and that you want to raise saints and also become one at the same time. So I want to encourage you, if you're listening to this live, sign up via the link below this video for a free training Kelly and I are going to be offering. And if you're listening to this after the fact, go check out Kelly Shoup and her brand new parenting membership where you can receive weekly coaching from a experienced coach. This woman has taught, just, just real quick, this woman has taught me so much about human behavior, both mine and my children. She has taught me that I am sensitive to noise, which I will forever laugh about, you know, God willing, I meet my creator, I get to like have this conversation with him face to face about you gave a mob who's got nine kids a sensitivity to noise. What's up with that? Anyway, I will chuckle about that forever. But she's helped me to understand that this is just a reality of my human nature. I am sensitive to noise. It's going to overwhelm me um, and, and what I can do about it. That's the thing. So that I don't feel like it's hopeless, so that I don't feel powerless. I did not realize like that I could do something about it to help me. I kind of just was like, this is just the reality. I don't know. I guess I'll wear earplugs. I don't know. I but I did not. I just didn't. I've never had to think about it. I've never thought about it. I, I whereas someone like Kelly, who has years of experience, training, licensing, certification, she can speak into these unique situations that we all have with our children and provide really strategic, implementable solutions. You know, I've been, I've been in like a. It's been a very interesting time of reflection over here in the Lisa Canning <laughs> universe. We've been, you know, dealing with a lot of illness the last few months, it feels like, but I actually think it has been 
Um, there's been just like lots of things that we've been navigating both on the work front and the personal front. And anyway, <clears throat> and what I have come to realize that I love doing for other people is simplifying things. I love simplifying business. I love simplifying motherhood. I love simplifying um, how to, you know, organize your home. Things that moms struggle with. I have a passion for making the complex simple. And when I don't know something specific, like when I don't have the expertise in a certain area, you betcha I'm going to go and find somebody who does. And that is what I have found in Kelly Shoop and what I'm so excited to offer to you next June, Wednesday, June 8th at 12 p.m. East. Join us for our free live training, particularly if you deal with power struggle, tantrums, and meltdowns and want to manage those a little bit more peacefully. I think there is nothing wrong with wanting to have a peaceful summer a relaxing summer. And there's also nothing wrong with having lots of thoughts of nervousness or challenge about how that's going to happen. But as you've heard me talk about so many times, our thoughts impact and determine our feelings, which then determine our actions, which then have a huge impact on our overall results. And so I want to encourage you, my fellow mom on the journey, that we can do this, that it is entirely possible for us to have a wonderful, restful, memorable summer where you feel like you were able to um, invest in yourself and invest in your own interests and activities and at the exact same time, create a wonderful, leisurely, safe, and memorable summer um, full of family memories. If you enjoyed this podcast, I would love for you to share it with a friend and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Let us all have an amazing summer together with our families, growing ourselves at the same time in both skill and virtue. All right, friends, until next time.